This video will demonstrate the performance of a simple linear regression equation. And this is a situation in which we have two uh, related quantitative variables and we want to try and use the explanatory or x variable to predict the y or the outcome variable. So we're going to have two uh, sets of data. We've got our x variable and our y variable. In this case, our x variable or uh, explanatory variable is temperature. And we're going to try and use that then to predict fluid consumption. So it'll be average ounces per person consumed um, on that given day at a given temperature. So we've established or we will establish a relationship between these two variables or we already have established a relationship. And so now we want to try and use this x variable temperature to then try and predict y or fluid consumption. So if I know it's going to be a certain temperature on a certain day, I can then use that to predict how much fluid I need to have available on average for each person. Okay, so there's several assumptions that we have when we do this. First of all, that these two variables really are related. Um, and we're going to assume at this point we've already established a, a relate, linear relationship between the two. We're also going to assume these variables have been measured uh, unbiased um, and, and accurately. Um, we're also going to assume that we have normally distributed values in these two variables. And we're also going to assume that we have um, variance that uh, is equal um, to the population and we don't have any outliers in this particular uh, relationship. So our first step in determining uh, or making this relationship um, is we're going to go to the Analyze menu, go to Regression, and choose Linear Regression. So in simple linear regression, we're using one explanatory variable to predict the outcome on one predictor or one outcome variable. Now we can do multiple linear regression where we can have multiple predictor variables or explanatory variables. And we can then use that to predict that single outcome. Um, and the, the, the process is not terribly different. And I'll explain once we get the actual output how it would be different with multiple regression. But what we're going to do, keep this simple and just do a simple linear regression where we've got one explanatory variable and one outcome. So we first want to enter our dependent variable into the dependent variables box. So our outcome is fluid consumption. And our independent or explanatory variable is temperature. So we can go to the statistics uh, menu here and make sure we're asking for descriptives. Um, determining how well the model or the equation fits the data we have, that will automatically be told to us, um, as well as giving us the regression coefficients that we're going to use. So we click Continue, and we click OK. So the first thing we're going to see are the descriptive data for the two variables, the means and the, and the variance. And then here's the actual R value. Uh, for the relationship between these two variables. So it's a very strong linear positive relationship between fluid consumption and temperature. But the next thing we want to determine is how we can use the equation to actually make the prediction. So the first thing we need to do before we can use the equation is go to the coefficients box where we can see the output that we're going to use to uh, use the equation. The first thing we need to find out is the y intercept. Uh, in SPS sets, that's called the constant. And you can see that here in this B column, the constant or Y intercept for this relationship is going to be minus 38.0. We also need to know the slope for the uh, regression line. And that is labeled here as temperature, which is the same as the explanatory variable. And that's 1.0. Okay, so now that we know these two, these two constants, we can then plug this into our formula. So let's take a quick look at the formula. So the formula we're using is this regression line formula, the line of best fit, um, designated as y equals a plus bx, where y is the value we want to determine, the value we want to predict, fluid consumption. a is the y-intercept, which we've already determined is minus 38. And B is the slope, which we've already determined is 1. And then X in the equation is the known explanatory variable value that we're going to have. In other words, we're going to know what X is, and then we're going to use that and the other values we came up with to plug this into the formula. So 
let's say for example we knew the temperature was going to be 75 degrees and we wanted to try and then predict what the fluid consumption would be on average for each person. So we then basically enter in the values we've already collected. So the y-intercept value would be entered in as minus 38 and then we'd add that to um, the product of the slope, in this case 1.0, and then the x value which we know to be 75 degrees. Okay, so we then solve for this equation and the value we would come up with would be 37. And this, again, to contextualize this would be 37 ounces um, per person on average. Okay, so again, that's how we can use this equation to determine if we, uh, what kind of prediction we can make based upon this known relationship. Now, a couple things that we can look at relative to this, and let's go back to the SPSS output to kind of get an idea of uh, the magnitude of the effect or how accurate the model really is, there's a couple things we can look at. We can look at the R squared for this relationship, which again gives us an idea of how much the X variable actually explains uh, of the variance of the Y variable. And about 95% of the variance in fluid consumption is being explained by temperature. Another thing we can look at again is, is, is how well the equation fits the data and we actually uh, are going to use a significance value, a coefficient significance value down here. So here again is temperature and when this significance value is less than 0.05 then that indicates we have a statistically significant model. In other words it does a, a really good job of predicting the outcome. Then the last thing we can look at um, is what's known as the standard error of the estimate. And what this does is gives us an idea of how much our prediction may actually be off. In other words, what's the range of scores the actual value may be. Uh, it's somewhat analogous to standard deviation. So when we produce a mean score with standard deviations, this prediction we've come up with will have a kind of a standard error of the estimate. So the prediction we came up with, with was 37 ounces, but the standard error of the estimate tells us we might be off plus or minus by about 3 ounces uh, for any given estimate that we might make. So ideally we want that standard error of the estimate to be small, which would indicate that the prediction that we're making will have a very small variation or very small error possibility. So to summarize what we've done is we've taken two quantitative variables. We've used uh, the relationship between them, the linear relationship between them, and then we can develop an equation that it can help us predict an outcome with a known explanatory variable value. We can look at the accuracy of this model by looking at several things. We can look at this coefficient um, to determine the goodness of fit or how well the model fits the, ver the, um, the, the data. We can look at the R squared value and then we can also look at the standard error of the estimate. Now if we were doing a, a multiple linear regression, if we had multiple x variables that we wanted to use to predict our single y variable, this process would not be really any terribly different. The only difference would be we'd have multiple slopes. So if we had temperature and maybe um, time of day as being um, the two x variables we wanted to work with, we would then end up with two slopes. And so in the equation then, we would end up with two x's. So we might have an x1 plus b um, of x2. And then we would continue that adding on those variables depending on how many x variables we had. And then we'd use the equation um, in the same manner that, that we showed with the single variable.